I survived for 200 days in hardcore Minecraft, and this is what happened. What is going on guys? My name is Deep Herd, and this is the continuation of 100 days. If you're interested in watching the whole 200 days, I would recommend checking out that video first. In any case, before we get started, I ask that you like this video and subscribe. These videos take a whole lot of time to make, and the love keeps me motivated to continue making them. By the way, if you're asking yourself why the skin changed, my answer is simple. All those game stonks will do that to a man. Let's begin. The rest of what I had left of day 100 was spent preparing for a mining trip. I hit up my iron farm, grabbed some iron, and made a bunch of pickaxes. My goal? Diamonds. I've got some plans for these next 100 days, but the first is working toward that god gear. With that, the night of day 100 through day 102 were spent mining. The only thing I was really interested in at this point was diamonds, and after a full two days of mining, I had them. I found two veins relatively close to each other, and with fortune 3, I was able to acquire 25 of them. At this point, I have enough diamonds for everything that I need right now. Here's a look at everything that I grabbed while I was down there. I dumped some blocks like cobblestone and granite in a chest down in the mine, so that's why the count on those blocks is a little low up here. The night of day 102, I went ahead and made that second set of armor along with a shovel. The rest of my time up until day 104 were spent flipping villagers for trades, feeding and killing cows for leather, and selling iron for emeralds and experience. The trades I flipped for were Respiration 3 and Depth Strider 3. I ended up getting both and putting Depth Strider on the boots. I put Respiration on the second helmet I made just to realize that it was actually cheaper to combine the book with my existing armor rather than combining both helmets. At this point, I realized I really didn't need this second set of armor at all. Maybe I can use it later on in the series. For now, it'll chill here on this armor stand as a subtle flex. A subtle flex of my stupidity. The night of day 104 consisted of me smelting all of my gold ore down and turning all of my nuggets into ingots. I don't want thorns on any of my armor, but I could use soul speed on the boots. So day 105, I went into the nether to try to find soul speed for my boots. I went and did some trading with this piglin. 36 gold later and I didn't receive a single soul speed book. I did get crying obsidian, a couple fire resistance potions, ender pearls, spectral arrows, quartz, and a couple of other things. Honestly, I don't know what spectral arrows are, but I'm wondering if they work with infinity. We'll have to test that later. The morning of day 106 was spent selling iron and paper to my villagers. I needed some experience for enchanting. I gathered the necessary amount and put unbreaking on my boots. Maybe later on I'll put soul speed on these, but for now I'm happy with them. The rest of day 106 six up until day 109 were spent searching around the nether for a nether fortress. I was nervous about getting lost, so I was only traveling in cardinal directions relative to my portal. I tunneled over lava for probably a day and a half. The only thing I found that was even remotely useful over the span of these three days were a bunch of bone blocks. I spent the rest of day 109 tunneling through the nether when I finally discovered a fortress. I was hyped. I now have access to blaze rods, potions, and the wither fight. Essentially, the next chapter of the game has opened up to me. I built a stair case up one of these big pillars and as I was climbing up received the terrible fortress advancement. I found myself at the top of a bridge, got into a small scuffle with a couple of wither skeletons and found this blaze spawner right near my staircase. Obviously blaze spawners are very common in nether fortresses, but the location of this one in comparison to my staircase had good synergy. I'll be turning this into an XP farm down the line. At this point I decided to head home. I ended up with a few blaze rods, no wither skulls though. I'll be back to the nether in a few days with looting three on my sword. I want better odds of getting the good stuff. The night of day 111 through the night of day 114 were spent expanding the base. This room is going to be the enchantment and potion brewing area. Now that I have access to a fortress, I have access to blazes, which means a brewing stand and potions. I figure I could split the room in half because I don't really need a whole room for each of these. I followed the same aesthetic as the rest of the base, oak and stone brick. This place is coming along all right. Throughout this time, I also converted my helmet, chest plate, and pants from diamond to netherite. I'll be converting my boots and tools to netherite when I come across more of this stuff. The morning of day 115 to day 117 was spent flipping a villager for looting three. Yes, I spent two days on this. You see, these trading halls are fantastic in the beginning. Pretty much every high tier enchantment is on the table. Once you get a lot of librarians in place and take those enchantments off the table, searching for one or two specific ones can get tedious. After these two days, I lost patience and settled with a looting two librarian. I bought two books and combined them for looting three. I'm pretty sure I'm only gonna need looting three one other time whenever I make the smite sword so I'm not worried about min-maxing the price. In any case, putting looting three on my sword was going to cost me 22 levels of experience. Not a big deal, I don't care about the experience. I just have a limited way to get this stuff right now. I went ahead and bred animals, traded villagers, and cooked food for nine levels of XP, and then put all of it directly into this sword. Worth. With looting in hand, the night of day 117 through the night of day 119 were spent exploring this nether fortress. I found some pretty good loot, the best of it being a few diamonds and some golden horse armor. Bernice is gonna be looking for 
lie. I only searched a tiny portion of this thing, to be honest. I'll have to come back and explore the rest of it later. I gathered some nether wart for brewing potions and got to work headhunting. I want to kill the wither within this hundred days, maybe even within 50. I've never fought the wither ever before. The first wither skeleton that I killed this trip dropped a skull, which really had me happy about that looting three choice. Nobody else did, though. I ended the adventure with 49 blaze rods. Honestly, I don't know much about brewing potions, but I'm assuming 49 rods is going to be an okay start for it. I got home on day 119 and decked out Bernice. I gotta stay alive. The night of day 119 through the night of day 121 were spent breeding animals and working on my potion brewing and enchantment area. This took the duration of two days because of all the cows I had to breed and kill for leather. I didn't have too many in the reserve. I spent my downtime making emerald stonks. With all this iron, the emerald stonks are coming in on the regular though. Here's a shot of the room essentially completed. I still need more bookshelves for level 30 enchantments, but you get the idea. Day 122 through day 126 were spent in the nether collecting wither skeleton skulls and the occasional blade rod. Even with looting three, this literally took four days straight of farming wither skeletons to get two more skulls. Maybe I just have really bad luck. By day 126, I had all three though, which means that the wither fight can happen on my terms. I still have a few things that I want to do first. The night of day 126 through day 127 were relatively chill. I spent this time messing with potions. I messed up and made a batch of mundane potions along the way, but I guess that's a part of the experience. In any case, I ended day 127 with several strength to Two, regeneration 2, slow falling, and instant healing potions. I made a chest to house my goods for the wither fight and then got to work making a diamond sword and coaxing a villager into an empty spot in the trading hall. The night of day 127 through the night of day 129 were spent flipping villagers. I have a few enchantments that I want to get. I want smite 5, power 5, infinity, flame, and punch 2. I got everything this session except for punch. These are enchantments that are not only going to help me survive the wither fight and ender dragon fight, but the rest of the series as well. The morning of day 130 I spent flipping villagers until I got punched too. It didn't take too long. I then crafted a bow and enchanted it like crazy. It took 26 levels of experience. I'm going to throw on breaking on it down the line but right now I clearly can't do that. The night of day 130 I sheared some sheep, made a ton of beds, and got to work mining for ancient debris. I still have one netherite scrap from my previous session of doing this so I'm pretty sure I only need seven right now. I think I just want to throw netherite on my boots and a sword for the time being. I'm not sure what sword. By day 132, I had three ancient debris and no beds left. I got home and converted my boots into netherite, prompting the advancement to pop up. Day 132, and I had a full set of decked out netherite armor. Good stuff. The night of day 132, I took to my mine. I wasn't going mining though. My plan was to go dig out a small space and prepare for the wither fight. I heard a bunch of mobs, got distracted, and found this abandoned mine shaft. I explored it for about a day and a half and found a very friendly zombie, grabbed some loot, most notably a name tag and took some spider webs and rails. I was also looking around hoping I could find a zombie or skeleton spawner but that didn't happen. I also lit up what I explored. I may be back to finish looting the rest of it in the future. I finished off the rest of the daytime on day 134 culling sheep. The herd's getting too big for its own good at this point. Nighttime on day 134 I went shopping at the trading hall. I picked up smite 5, fire aspect, and mending for my second sword. I then went ahead and took a trip to the nether with an inventory filled with beds and got to work looking for more debris. I mined until the very early morning on day 136 and came across five more debris. I got home and turned it into scrap and then into an ingot. And then I was conflicted on which sword I should put netherite on. I ended up going with the sharpness one for now. Honestly, I'll have everything decked out in netherite soon enough, so it doesn't even matter. The morning of day 136, I took a trip to the iron farm, grabbed some iron, and I saluted. The sacrifice of these golems will not go in vain. I went down to the mine and found a perfect spot for this fight to happen. Before I decided to risk it all, I went and said goodbye to my pets. They've been good to me. I also went and officially deemed Bernice as such with the name tag from the mineshaft earlier. Honestly, I was a little nervous, but I went ahead and reincarnated my iron brethren and maiden army. Together, we are going to take this thing out. And by together, I mean mostly you guys. I also brung a bunch of chicken eggs and spawned chickens in the room. The chickens are going to be turned into wither roses. I don't have any use for them, but if I'm going to be fighting the wither, I might as well take advantage of this. Day 136 meshed into day 137, and with that, I placed the three heads of the wither on the body and the fight was on. I overprepared, big time. I didn't even do anything, I just sat in this tunnel while the golems did all the work. It only took 37 seconds from when I placed the last skull to when the wither died. I was given the glorious nether star and can now craft beacons. Oh, the strategy 
see what the chickens worked also. I now have 11 wither roses. The night of day 137 was a pretty chill one. There was an intense thunderstorm going outside, so I just kept it low-key in the base. I did a little mining with my newly acquired diamond hoe. That's right, baby. And she tills like a dream. Day 138 started out kind of hectic. I went outside during this storm and was visited by the horsemen of the apocalypse. I've never seen anything like this before, so naturally I wanted one of these skeleton horses badly. I literally killed them all, though. I don't know. Like I said, I've literally never seen one of these before in a world of mine, so now I'm kind of salt that I wasn't able to capture one. I spent the rest of the day taking my frustration out on trees and ended it with roughly three stacks. The morning of day 139, I gathered sand out in front of the base and made some more bottles for slow falling potions. I know I already made some, but I want to keep them on deck. While I waited for all my sand to smelt down into glass, I sold some iron for emerald stonks. The rest of the day and into day 140 were spent making more chests and organizing them. This is very time consuming at this point because of all the rearranging of chests and I didn't even finish. I'll get to it though. This one right here is going to be my stats for the ender dragon fight. I've never done this fight before so I'm going to over prepare for it. I don't plan on searching for a stronghold until a little later on. I am going to get ready for it though. I went ahead and assessed my ender pearl situation. With 11 of them in the ender dragon stash, I know I'm going to need more. I got to search for the portal and then I'm going to want a couple in my inventory for the fight. With that, the night of day 140, I got to work in the nether killing enderman. This is one of the upsides to my portal location. These things are everywhere. I ended the session and made my way back home with another 29 pearls by lunchtime on day 141. In total, I now have 40 pearls. I think I'm good. I think. Day 141, I went ahead and turned 22 pearls into Eyes of Ender. 12 for the portal and 10 for the trip finding the portal. That might be overkill, but it is what it is. This leaves me with 18 pearls in the inventory. Way more than I'll need right now. I then went ahead and gathered a little wood to top off my supply and began work on more potions and adjusting my current line. Up. I switched everything over to splash potions. It's just going to be quicker. I made some more strength potions, slow falling potions, and then a few golden apples. My lineup for the dragon fight looks pretty good so far. I have a bunch of potions, a decent amount of golden apples, this gold apple from the desert temple back in 100 days, basic building blocks, a few water buckets. I'm in decent shape. I want some more golden apples though. So with that, the night of day 141 into day 142, I decided my best course of action for gathering gold was to hit up the nether and scour through my strip mine for gold nuggets. I came across quite a bit of this stuff, which converted into four more apples. At this point, I've got 12 golden apples. I'm feeling good now. The rest of day 142 through the morning of day 143 were spent gathering a very specific assortment of blocks and clearing some land outside. I was about to begin work on my next project when a wandering trader showed up. His trades were not good, like usual. The punishment was death for both him and his llamas. The llamas were a great source of leather. Speaking of which, this next project is a leather farm. Kind of. Just a cow killing farm farm, but still, leather's a byproduct. With that, I began working on this cow killing farm. Midway through, I nearly got ambushed by a creeper. Spooky stuff. This farm took me up until day 144, and then I spent the night of day 144 waiting around for a cow to grow up for demonstration purposes. No cows grew up, and it started raining. I decided to take a snooze. I haven't thus far in this video, and I got Gucci bags under my eyes at this point. Day 145 was a pretty chill one. I spent it collecting iron, selling it for emeralds, and checking up on that cow breeder for a demonstration. With the water to spend, are turned on, you breed these cows and the baby will fall into the lower chamber. Once the babies grow up, you hit this button and boom, leather and cooked food right in the chest for you. I want to note that this isn't my design. Most of these farms are not. The rest of this time was spent smelting cobblestone into regular stone and turning that into stone brick. I then picked up silk touch in the shop for my shovel. This would come in handy for my next project. Days 146 through 151 were spent terraforming, collecting grass blocks, and working on this auto sheep shearing farm. It's not done yet. No near, but I got all the grayscale colors out of the way. I need 16 different dyed sheep, and so far I have four. Not too bad of a start. It also doesn't look terrible. I'm going to re-terraform to make it blend in more with the hill, I think, though. Throughout this time, I was also searching the ocean. I had to go out for ink sacks, and I kind of got distracted. Day 152 was spent lounging around the base, getting ready to head out in search of the stronghold. I took it easy, day 152. I knew it was coming wasn't going to be as easy. Here's what I'm taking with me. I'd say I'm good to go. If you're wondering why I'm taking the glass bottles, it's for the dragon's breath. I can always resummon the dragon later, but since I'm fighting it now, why not just collect it now? Day 153, I took to the surface, said goodbye to Bernice, and then took towards the stronghold. I threw my first eye of Ender. I tossed several along my path, and only two ended up breaking. I guess I'm pretty lucky. Anyway, I got to a point right here where the pearls were just traveling down, so that's where I dug. I found the stronghold and got the eye spy advancement, lit up the area a little bit, but honestly, I found the portal room way quicker than I thought I would. This was a relief. 
leave. I decided not to check out the rest of the stronghold so I wouldn't get lost. I said a prayer and hopped on through. My spawn was on an island outside of the main island. This is what the pearls are for. I threw one and got to work taking out the crystals. This was my first time ever fighting the dragon and I think it went pretty well. It was actually fairly anticlimactic. I didn't have to climb to take out the caged crystals since both of the towers happened to be low on this world. The fight itself was pretty straightforward, a combination of arrows and headshots from underneath with my sword. I ate a couple of gold apples and used a couple of feather falling potions, but yeah, I overprepared for this. With a final blow, I collected my XP and the rest of day 153 into day 154 were spent searching around for an end city. I got pretty close to dying. My spawn through this first gateway was terrible, not close to any big landmass at all. I called it quits and decided I'm gonna have to come back later on with a ton of blocks and build out to a big island. I jumped through the portal, let the credits roll, and got back to my casa on day 154. I spent the rest of this time just chilling with my hose. I wish. Day 154 through day 158 were spent on aesthetic work. This consisted of building a couch, a little table, a lamp with the dragon egg, and this aquarium. Small changes, but I'm happy with the outcome. Day 159 through day 162 were spent working in the farm area, in particular bringing the idea of that automated sugarcane farm to fruition. I went ahead and got to work on it, and by day 162 I had a completely automated farm. Fairly certain this is built within a spawn chunk as well, so even when I'm not around base it's still going to be producing sugarcane. Not 100% sure on that though, only time will tell. Day 162 I watched the sun set from the ocean, and day 163 I watched the moon set from the ocean. I was trident hunting. I gave up midway through day 164 though. At this point I'm thinking the search for a trident is much like the search for a girlfriend. You find it when you aren't looking for it. I decided to put unbreaking on my shovel and with an empty inventory the rest of day 164 I hit up the desert that was near me and gathered a bunch of sand. I need glass to continue my sheep sharing farm and I don't want to completely wreck the terrain of the ocean right in front of my base. I spent the rest of the day gathering like seven or eight stacks of sand. Overnight I smelted it down into glass and crafted observers and dispensers. Day 165, you guessed it baby, we sheep shearing. They ain't gonna do it themselves. If you're wondering what I'm gonna do with all this wool, so am I. This took me until the night of day 168. I had an issue with my redstone where the hopper minecart wasn't feeding into the chests. I ended up solving it without looking anything up on YouTube, so that may be why it took me the extra day. If you're wondering what the issue was, the hopper just needed to be moved away from the redstone block. My plan is to extend this in the future with every color, but I'm happy with it for now. On the night of day 168, I ended up having a couple cats spawn in the base from the village. They both had nice color schemes, so I ended up taming one. Nice. A little creeper deterrent. Day 169, I shifted my gears and focused my attention on a mob XP farm. The goal of this thing is to be an XP farm that also gets me a bunch of drops. I could use gunpowder for rockets, bows for dispensers, and rotten flesh for trading. By day 173, she was finished. I chilled around for a little bit and got my first mob spawns. Good stuff. The rest of day 173 and the night of were spent making a little chill room at the bottom of this farm where the kill chamber is. Eventually it'll be decked out with everything you'd want in an XP farm area, but for now it serves its purpose. I woke up on day 174 for a quick tour of it in the daylight. I know it's a hideous obstruction right in front of my base, but hey, this is hardcore. I'm thinking stonks first, aesthetic second. With that, the rest of day 174 was spent in the nether working on my little nether hub area. I want to pretty it up. I got the stonks, but no aesthetic. I spent until day 175 working on this. It's still not great, but at least I feel safer. Day 176 and day 177 were fairly chill. I spent them crafting up more dyes. At this point, I think I have every single color except for brown. I haven't found a jungle yet for cocoa beans, but I'll hunt for it in the future. The rest of day 177 was spent collecting some wood. I took the wood I just got and converted a lot of it into beds, and days 178 through 181 were spent in the nether mining debris. I ended the session the night of day 181 with 9 debris. I got home, smelted them down, and converted them into ingots. I was able to get two out of this, which means two more tools are getting upgraded. We'll figure out which ones later. The morning of day 182 was spent lighting up the area near my mob farm to deter spawns. The rest of day 182 through the night of day 186 were spent AFK at the farm just to see what kind of rates I got. I use that term AFK lightly because I was at my computer watching the entire time. I wasn't going to go AFK in this hardcore world. In the middle of this, I accidentally had a skeleton kill a creeper, which naturally dropped a disc. I then took advantage of this and got a bunch of them. Sweet. I can farm this for all of the discs in the future. Day 187 through day 195 were spent working on aesthetic work outside of the base. Instead of telling you about everything that I did, I'm just going to show you with a very quick tour. Enjoy.
Day 196 and the night of were spent flipping a villager for efficiency 5. I ended up settling for efficiency 3 and just leveled the books up in an anvil. I then put the efficiency 5 book on my pickaxe and upgraded it to netherite. Day 197 was a pretty chill one. I spent it farming wheat and trading iron with villagers. Day 198 I took down to my mind to test this bad boy out. I actually needed coal. My stash is really low and I want to re-up before I begin to attempt 300 days. I found a decent amount of coal along with 26 diamonds. I have more use for the coal at this point but I'll have use for the diamonds down the road. I got home in the middle of day 199 and figured what a better way to spend the rest of my day than selling iron for emeralds. Day 200. We did it ladies and gentlemen, another 100 days down. I decided to kick back and reflect with my hoes on these past 100 days. We've come a long way. In this 100 days I was able to find and loot a nether fortress, automate my sugarcane farm, build an auto sheep shearing farm, kill the wither, kill the ender dragon, build an auto cow killing farm, build a mob farm, on top of a bunch of other stuff that's still important just not as as important, but most importantly, I survived. If you enjoyed and would like to see 300 days, please hit the like button, let me know down in the comments, and subscribe so you don't miss out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.